in actual fact, this pericle starts from verse 25 of chapter 20, sorry, verse 23 of chapter 25. But for the sake of time, I will pick the reading from verse 4. On one of those days, I was going to Damascus. I preach that 
They should repent and tell people and prove their repentance by their deeds. That is why the Jews seized me in the temple of God and tried to kill me. But I have had God's help to this very day. And so I stand here and testify to small and great alike. I am saying that beyond what the prophet and Moses said will happen, that the Christ will suffer and as the first to rise from the dead will proclaim life to his own people and to the Gentiles. Shall we pray? Father, once again, we thank you for the privilege to share your word. We ask for the help of the Holy Spirit to help us understand your word. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. None of us here is in this world by accident. believers. 
Now, shall we go into the passages of consecration and discuss three ways how every minister can fulfill his God giving assignment? Hallelujah. can fulfill his God-given assignment by being conscious of his calling by Jesus Christ. And you can look at, you can find that in verse 3 to 16. Sorry, verse 12 to 16. On one of these days, I was going to Damascus with authority and the commission of the chief priest about whom who came as I was on the road. I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun, blazing around me and my companion. We all fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me in our remake, so, so, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the Lord. Then I asked, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. The Lord replied, now, get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen of me and what I will show you. The minister becomes conscious of his calling by knowing that he is a servant of Christ Jesus. A servant is a person who performs a duty for someone, especially as a personal assistant or a devoted follower or a supporter. According to the context, Paul was appointed by Jesus as a servant to the preaching of the gospel. Paul's mandate as a servant was to represent the interest of Jesus wherever he would stand, and as a result, he walked with this kind in mind always, and so he never retreated in advancing the gospel to the unwilling Gentiles. And this helped him work towards the end, fulfilling his God given servant, God given assignment of preaching Christ before kings and Gentiles. Hallelujah. Amen. Who are you to Jesus? The minister becomes conscious of his calling, not as a servant of Jesus Christ, but also as a witness. Jesus Christ. You can find that in the system. <coughs> a witness is a person who sees an event take place. The statement appointed as a servant of what you have seen of me and what I will show you. Conviction that 
If some pastors claim that they are the head pastor of that church, then who is Jesus in that church? Jesus told Paul that he had appointed him as a servant and as a witness. This was Paul's calling. Brothers and sisters, what is your calling? What have you been called to do? Who are you to Jesus? And who is Jesus to you? In the case of Jeremiah, he was told and he knew that he was appointed as a prophet to the nation. What is your God giving us? What have you been told to do? When you successfully complete this program, what are you going out there to do? Are you going to lord it over the people? Are you going to cause people to serve you? What are you going to preach about? Once again. Who are you to Jesus? A servant, a witness, or what? Think about that. Senior ministers, we are called by Jesus to preach nothing but the gospel. And so we must be conscious that we have been called. And through that, we will fulfill our God given assignment. When we are conscious, that we have been called by Jesus. We will not complain <laughs> about where we have been sent, but we will be so mindful of fulfilling our God given assignment. When Reverend Solomon King was preaching on Monday, he made reference to a pastor who refused to go to a certain place because he wouldn't have electricity to charge his mobile phone. What do you think what was that pastor to Jesus? He may have been genuinely called, but is he conscious <laughs> of his calling? Assignment of your life, 
You show him to walk in the consciousness of your calling. That is to be a servant and a witness to you. Amen. Every Christian can fulfill his God-given assignment not only by being conscious of his calling, but also by being conscious of his charge in the ministry.
The Lord every day brings us into contact with people who are blind. There are many people in this world who have their two eyes. They walk about, but they are spiritually blind. And you are the one you have been called. You are the one called to open their eyes. There are many people in this world who are living in darkness. You have been called to switch on the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ around them and in their lives. Hallelujah. Paul was also told that he was to turn people from the power of Satan to God. In contrast, the phrase to turn them from the power of Satan to God means that Satan rules on all who have not surrendered their lives to the love of Jesus Christ. And as such, it was Paul's bandage. So it is yours. By the preaching of the gospel, to turn these people from following Satan. It was not enough for the Gentiles to cease from being the subject of Satan. Paul had to bring them by the preaching of the gospel to a place where they would accept the Lordship of Jesus Christ. To this mandate, he gave all of his, himself. So, he recounted in one of his epistles that he suffered hunger, persecution, beatings, exposed to all kinds of things. Because Paul was conscious of his child in the ministry. To open the eyes of the spiritual mind. <laughs> to turn people from darkness to light. And to turn people from the power of Satan to God.
Si tú no yo pego ese de mí, ¿sí? Y un muchacho con aquí para atrás. Pero si tú no yo pego ese de mí, ¿sí? Y un fulfillo con aquí para atrás. So Paul, on his dying bed, counting so much on Timothy, and having been convinced of this fact that he had fulfilled his God-given assignment, said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now, there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous dead, will award to me. But also to all who have longed for his appearing. It is my prayer that God will grant us the grace to always be conscious of our purpose. How many of us can, can say this when we get to the retiring age of 65 at that service when we are given the opportunity to cancel the younger ones who will be in the ministry? Would we also be able to say like Paul? We have fought the good fight. We have finished the race. We have kept the faith. Can we confidently say that a crown of righteousness is laid out for you? Not only can every minister fulfill his God given assignment by being conscious of his calling and his charge in the ministry, also. Every minister can fulfill his God-given assignment by being committed to the dictates of his calling. And you can see that in verse 19 to 23. So then, came Agrippa. I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven, first to those in the apostles, then to those in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and to the Gentiles also. I preached that they should repent and turn to God and prove their repentance by their deeds. That is why the Jews seized me in the temple court and tried to kill me. But I have had God's help to this very day. And so I stand here and testify to small and great alike. I am saying nothing beyond what the prophet and Moses said would happen that the Christ would suffer and as the first to rise from the dead would proclaim light to his own people and to the Gentiles. Amen. The minister becomes committed to the details of his calling by preaching to all.
to those in Damascus, those in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and to the Gentiles to do what? To repent and to turn to God and prove their repentance by their deeds. For what else was he to do than to preach the gospel? So don't be surprised when we hear God say that I'm not ashamed. We continue to say in the same epistle and in the first Corinthians of that, for necessity is laid upon me. We will say that no is me if I do not preach the gospel. Could you be so committed to your calling and to your church in the ministry that you can say necessity is laid?
and give us the benefits. Classes. We pray that you go with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our Father, we commit our lives into your hands. May your grace, your mercy, your favor go before us throughout this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.